A high school student who was suspended for refusing to stand during the Pledge of Allegiance is now suing the school district and the principal who decided to suspend her. Her name is India Landry and she is a student at Winfern High School. And apparently she was sent to the principal's office after she was caught texting in class. And then while she was at the principal's office, the Pledge of Allegiance was done through the intercom and she remain seated. At that point, the principal apparently saw her and wasn't too pleased with it. Let me tell you what the exchange allegedly was. When the principal, Martha Strother, asked Landry to stand, the 17 year old declined. According to the complaint, Strother told Landry, well, you're kicked out of here. And then her secretary allegedly told the student, this is not the NFL. Now this hmm. is a public school that receives taxpayer funding, which means that administrators or educators who violate free speech are basically violating the constitution. Now in some cases on a school campus, there are more limitations to speech, especially when it comes to something that could be distracting to an educational environment or if it's speech that could potentially harm anyone on campus. But in this case, it was protected speech. She is not to be forced to stand during the Pledge of Allegiance or the national anthem or anything like that. She was suspended for several days and now she is filing a federal civil rights lawsuit against the school district. And I think she has a pretty good case there. So I want you to understand that the texting had nothing to do with the story. The only reason it's brought up is because that's what got her sent to the principal's office. And that's fine, you're not allowed to text in class. So that's, but that's not the issue, that's not why she was kicked out. She was kicked out because she wouldn't stand for the pledge. And, she, and that has been her consistent principle as they pointed out over 200 times. And well, that's what's great about this country is two things. One is you have the freedom of speech and can express your political opinions in any way you like within these confines. And she's perfectly within her rights to do that. And so that's what the Pledge of Allegiance is about. That's what the country is about, is celebrating that idea. So the people who are doing this, they're, they're so wrong headed and they're actually insulting the the idea of America way more mm -hmm. than the people who are practicing the freedom of speech and protesting their government and their government's actions. Protesting your, your government's actions is the most American thing you could do. And then the second part of it is, think about like she's saying, hey, I want to, in essence, fix the system, fix the injustice and create a more perfect union, which is exactly what the constitution wants you to do. The constitution doesn't say sit on your ass, and don't do anything, don't ask for redress of grievances, don't protest, don't be the press, don't try to fix the government. It says fix this government. In, in the constitution, it gives you two different ways to do amendments and to protest the government that the constitution has formed. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a document built by rebels. They literally rebelled against the king, they did a revolution, they won their freedom and it's built on freedom. So the people who are saying, no, you should not exercise that freedom, misunderstood the whole point of the country. They're the ones who have no respect for that flag and what it stands for. So the type of mentality that the principal had in this story is, is not, you know, it's not unique to conservatives. I want to be clear about something. This type of weird jingoistic bias runs deep in the country. And I, you know, I didn't really realize how deep it runs until fairly recently, to be honest with you, when an audience member was pretty upset during a recent show when I made the argument that the United States is not the best country. Now, I don't say that because I have disdain for the US. I love this country. I have extremely high standards for this country. And I think that it is incredibly wrong headed to pretend as though everything is perfect and that we should be complacent and that we shouldn't expect better from our country, right? Mm -hmm. So so for instance, you know, Obviously, we have a long way to go when it comes to our healthcare system. We have a long way to go when it comes to a number of things. There have been a number of international studies that you know rank countries based on quality of life, the economic situation, healthcare, education. You think we're number one on those lists? We're not number one on those lists. Okay, and and so yeah, we need to improve. And if you want to think about it on a, on a micro scale, think about an employee that you work with, a colleague that you work with, someone who might get um, constructive criticism from 
management. I mean, if that person said, no, I'm perfect, I'm not gonna take any criticism, I'm not gonna consider any of these improvements. I mean, well, how would you think of that person? They're not gonna improve because they are completely oblivious or, or they refuse to accept the fact that there are improvements that need to be made and that's not cool. Think about your husband. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a person doesn't ever change? A person uh, that can't ad adjust or adapt, uh, etc. Look, one last thing about this. I remember, and and you got to remember, I was a knucklehead. I I used to be conservative, and I, and I drove me crazy when people wouldn't stand for the pledge, and I thought it was wrong, and they should have been kicked out. So I was wrong, and I was willing to change. And I used to be upset at Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, who used to be Chris Jackson, and he wouldn't stand for the pledge because he was Muslim and he wanted to, he cared about his religion. Okay, now of course in America we say we care a lot about religion unless you're Muslim. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, your religion, no, stand for the pledge. Now, the reason I tell you that whole long story is because it's not just Americans. So uh, he had issues with the NBA, he went to go play in Turkey. And then he didn't stand for the Turkish uh, uh, national anthem either because it, he felt it was against his religion and Turkey's 99% Muslim. Mm -hmm. They're like, what is with this guy who won't stand for the national mm -hmm. anthem? And they were even more pissed at him than the Americans were. Mm -hmm. So he thought he was gonna get a better reception because the country is Muslim, and he did not. So I tell you that because I get it, man, it's in our bones. Like we wanna stand up for our flag, we wanna stand up for our country. And that is, that's something, because we're standing up for our tribe. What I'm asking you to do, what America is asking you to do, what the Constitution is asking you to do is to get beyond that and realize that standing up for your country is to help it get better. Help us build independent media, become a member of the Young Turks, tytnetwork.com slash join.